हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर गुरमनजीत कौर एसोसीएट प्रोफेसर खालसा कॉलेज ऑफ एजुकेशन रंजीत एवेन्यू अमृतसर वेल स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी विल डिस्कस ह्यूमन रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट इन एजुकेशन आफ्टर गोइंग थ्रू द टॉपिक यू विल बी एबल टू टेल द मीनिंग ऑफ ह्यूमन रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट आइडेंटिफाई द कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट्स ऑफ ह्यूमन रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट नो अबाउट द चैलेंजेस ऑफ ह्यूमन रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट डिस्क्राइब द रोल ऑफ ह्यूमन रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट इन एजुकेशन सेंसिटाइज अबाउट द नीड ऑफ ह्यूमन रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट एट डिफरेंट लेवल्स एंड लिस्ट द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ ह्यूमन रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट डिस्क्राइब द रोल ऑफ ह्यूमन रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट एट डिफरेंट लेवल्स इन एजुकेशन टेल अबाउट द फंक्शन ऑफ ह्यूमन रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट नाउ द क्वेश्चन अराइजेज वट एक्चुअली ह्यूमन रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट इज ह्यूमन रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट इज द प्रोसेस दैट डील्स विद यूटिलाइजिंग पीपल टू परफॉर्म ड्यूटीज एंड फंक्शन इन एन ऑर्गनाइजेशनल और इंस्टीट्यूशन ह्यूमन रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट इन एजुकेशन इज अ सेट ऑफ प्रैक्टिस एंड methods of integrating and maintaining the teaching and other staff in the institution so that the institution can achieve their purposes and can meet the goals of the institution that were established human resource management is the planning organizing directing controlling of the procurement development compensation integration maintenance and separation of human resources to the end where individual organization and social objectives are accomplished human resource management in education is essentially concerned with three major issues first of all assessing the need for staff satisfying the need for staff and maintaining and improving the staff services human resource management is made up of two words human resources and management human resource refers to the personnel staff or workers in an institution management means the methods by which the leader utilizes material and human resources to achieve predetermined organizational goals the human resource man management is the process that deals with the utilizing people to perform duties and functions in an organization human resource management deals with the establishment of procedures for the employment and payment of workers or staff it is the arrangement of conditions which make possible greater self direction by staff in the performance of their duties it is therefore an important function in the general context of all administrative responsibilities of managing the staff human resource management in education is a set of practices and methods of integrating and maintaining the teaching and other staff in the institution so that the institution can achieve the purpose and as well as meet the goals for which it has been established it is the motivation and coordination of the activities and efforts of the teachers and other employees in the school to obtain maximum output from them and consequently achieve the goals of educational optimally in order in other words human resource management is the process of motivating workers in the organization so as to obtain maximum output from them in simple words that is the process of making the efficient and effective use of human resources in an education institution so that the set goals of education are achieved now the question arises what constitute human resource management human resource management constitutes our knowledge skill competency capability caring others attitudes creativity consciousness accountability leadership autonomy and self management now 
let's know the objectives of human resource management. The primary objective of human resource management is to ensure the availability of right people for right jobs. So as the educational goals of an educational organization are achieved effectively, the primary objective can further be divided into the following sub-objectives. First of all, to help the educational organization to attain its goals effectively and efficiently by providing competent and motivated teachers. Then to utilize the efficiency of each teacher available in school effectively. Then to increase each employee's or teacher's efficiency, job satisfaction and self-actualization. Then to develop and maintain the quality of work life which makes employment in the educational organization a desirable personal and social situation. Then to help maintain ethical policies and behavior inside and outside the educational organization. To establish and maintain cordial relations between employees and management. Now we see the educational system at every level depends heavily on the human resources for the execution of its program. It is the human resources only who ultimately interprets and implements policies as represented in the school calendar or school system, which is designed to actualize educational goals. Then managing, maintaining and improving educational standards is only possible through human resources. Human resources, therefore, are the most indispensable entity in the school system. They are the greatest aid to the success of the whole system. On the one hand, the human resources are the critical resources for efficiency and implementation and realization of the educational policies and objectives at the practical level of classroom and on the other hand to improve the entire institutional system. It should be noted that the major premise of human resources management in education is that the end result of the educative process will be the determined by the effectiveness of the human resources who facilitate learning for self-actualization and national development. Human resource management in education essentially is concerned with three major issues, namely assessing the need for staff, satisfying the need for staff, maintaining and improving the staff services. Now, first of all, assessing the need for staff. The school needs to assess areas of need and recruit the staff to exhibit capable governance and leadership at various levels, both of which will promote student performance and school effectiveness. Even institutes need to develop assessment and to identify available services and gaps in services and assess the level of knowledge, perception and attitudes of the employees. The assessment will help a school or a group of schools to collect information about existing policies, prevention and intervention, students' knowledge and perceptions of abuse and resources as well as services available to the students in the school and in the community. The information will assist the school or the group in identifying their plus points, gaps in resources and services and highlight success in order to leverage resources to achieve desired outcomes. Now, second is satisfying the need for staff. There is need to identify internal factors that motivate an individual's behavior, disburse competitive financial compensation to satisfy employees, employees' physiological needs. Physiological needs include things such as food, water, shelter, clothing, all of which can be satisfied with the reliable income. Provide compensation benefits packages to the employees to satisfy their safety needs. Let job words and actions ensure employees that they have job security as well as safety. Safety means physical health, 
job security and protection for the private property. Create a welcoming institutional culture, culture based on mutual respect to satisfy employees needs for belonging. Belonging needs include needs for friendship, social integration, family and romantic relationships. Giving employees the freedom to socialize can be a double edged sword. While some employees may become loyal to, the, to their workplace relationships, others may become dissatisfied if they do not fit into the social circles. Reward highly performed publicly. Those who are highly performers, they should be rewarded publicly and provide these employees with personally rewarding challenges to satisfy their esteem needs. Esteem needs means respect from others, a sense of achievement and confidence in one's abilities. Establish the rapport by speaking personally with many of the employees daily and as many teachers as possible. Encourage employees and the, especially the rising stars in the institute for their outstanding achievements. Institute comprehensive employee development programs and provide ample opportunities for them, for their growth and the institution to satisfy their self-actualization needs. The last one, maintaining and improving the staff services. The ideas are intended only in to illustrate some of the measures that may be taken by the service organization in practice. There is often overlap between the actions and practices in each category and a number of other possibilities may be considered. Now we will discuss what role is played by human resource management in education. The goals of human resource management in education are to develop the employees and to contribute to the achievement of goals. Human resource management have some specific roles to play that are strategic and operational roles. Now first of all, the institutions need to perform both types of roles to ensure that they have the right staff with the right skills and abilities, knowledge and the right time to compete work for the institution. This allows the institution to achieve its goals and objectives. As far as the strategic role is concerned, it involves the functions and implementation of major goals and initiatives taken by an institution for the top management on behalf of owners or local heads in the consideration of resources and assessment of the internal and external environments in which they are working. Strategically, human resources must be viewed in the same context as the financial, technological and other resources and are managed in any organization. The strategic human resource management staff performs a planning role that focuses on the long term interests of the education. As far as the operational role is concerned, it is when the human resources functions to for the employees day to day work. It includes maintaining policies and records, ensuring compliance to the local, state and national regulations and managing discipline related disputes and complaints. In the impression human resource management, professionals handle day to day tactical operations. It has been seen that human resources were once relegated to second class status in the society. But in these days, its importance has grown dramatically in the last two decades. This is right way that can make them committed to the job, remain dedicated to the institution and productive in the educational system. Only then they can represent a significant investment of the educational efforts. If managed well, human resources can be a source of competitive input for the education. 
one more operational human resource task is associated with the recruiting and training of employees. Now, no doubt the institutions used ensure they have the right staff with the right skills and knowledge at the right tune to complete work with the quality in education. This allows the educational institutions to achieve its goals and objectives. Human resource management is interested in the compliance with equal employment opportunities and observation of laws in educational sector. Safety problems must be resolved, wages and salaries must be administered, a wide range of activities typically associated with the day-to-day -day management of people as provided by the laws and regulations must be performed efficiently. It is this collection of activities that has often been referred to as the personal functions. In short, it is difficult to produce one general interpretation of what human resource management means today. Human resource management has to perform certain functions. These are staff maintenance, staff relations, staff development, procurement of staff, job performance reward. First of all, staff maintenance. This is done to make the work environment conducive for workers. Pertinent practices include promotion and transfer, motivation, staff safety, security, and health services. It is pertinent that educational establishment have sound policies in respect of staff transfer and promotion to ensure that justice and fairness prevails in dealing with the staff. As work to be performed in the school is important, the mood of the men to perform the job is equally important. For maximum and productive goal attainment, the educational organization had must ensure the comfort and happiness of the employees. That can be done through prompt payment of salaries and ensuring a safe and healthy working environment. Staff relations. There must be a good communication network in the institute to enable teachers to be constantly informed of the progress being made in the educational organization. Teachers, employees should be encouraged to participate in planning, decision making in the school. They should be encouraged by recognizing the staff as a human being with feelings, interests, needs and emotions and treating them as such with fairness and respect. Staff development. This is the process of appraising staff performance and identifying their key skills and competence, their need development or training to improve their skills for better performance. It involves providing development programs and training courses that are suitable for the institution. The success of educational organization hinges on the number and quality of its staff members. There is need to change, improve and grow continuously in competence. This can be done through in-service training, conferences, workshops and seminars. Procurement of staff. Human resource management functions staff with the process of recruitment and selection by which educational institutions get the best personnel to interpret and implement the curriculum programs. Staffing of school is a job performed by the Ministry of Education through its agencies working in the federal and state governments. Procurement of staff in education deals with obtaining people with appropriate and necessary skills abilities, knowledge and experience to fill the vacant teaching posts in education. Staff performance would increase substantially if they are adequately compensated according to the quality and quantity of work done. Last one is job performance rewards. This involves the design and administration of rewards for jobs performed. It is very important that Management Ministry of Education and its agencies take the issue of reward system very seriously. We have to see what is the need for human resource management.
human resource management is the backbone of every type of organization. The triumph of every education organization depends upon the worth of the person it employs. Human resource management helps in supporting the exact individual for the precise job. Suitability for the job or quality of work go hand in hand in determining the quality of any workforce. Human resource management helps in creating better rapport between the management and the subordinates. It helps subordinates to realize individual and organizational goals. Since employees are constantly trained, they are ready to meet the job requirements. The institution is also able to identify potential employees who can be promoted to the future for the top level jobs. Thus, one of the advantage of human resource management is preparing people for the future promotions. The institution will be able to select the right people for the right job only. If proper selection and recruitment procedure is followed, it has been seen that less number of people leave the educational organization what they are when they are satisfied with their jobs. When proper human resource policies are adopted and employees are trained well, this makes them not only satisfied but also ready for the future promotions. Their talent can be utilized in their organization in which they are working as well as in other institutions. Political philosophy has undergone change all over the world. The new approach is to develop human resources properly for making it its better use. The technological changes have necessitated the job of sophisticated technology. Now the question arises, how to manage human resources? These can be managed at four levels, that is at national level, organizational level, professional level and personal level. At national level, these can be managed by creating conducive conditions for development of the nation. By providing suitable means for exploitation and utilizing nation's natural, physical and financial resources required for efficient and committed manpower. Then by facilitating and generating high standard of living through inculcating such skills, attitudes and values that are needed to speed up the process of economic and educational growth. As far as the organizational level is concerned, human resource management is relatively a new approach to manage people. People are considered the key resource in this approach. It is concerned with the people's dimension in the management of an institution. Since an institution is a body of people, their acquisition development of skills motivation for higher levels of attainment as well as ensuring maintenance of their level of commitment are all significant activities. Human resource management is responsible for maintaining good human relations in the institution. It is also concerned with the development of individuals and achieving integration of goals of the institution and those of the individuals. Professional level. Effective management of human resources helps to improve the quality of work life. It permits teamwork among employees by providing a healthy working environment. It can contribute professional growth in the following ways. First of all, providing maximum opportunities for personal development of each employee, then maintaining healthy relationships among individuals and different work groups then allocating work properly then last one is the personal management this part of management is concerned with the people at work in an institution individuals need to develop their relationship within the institute its aim is to bring together and develop into an effective institution of the men and women who make up for the institution and have regard for the well-being of the individuals and of working groups to enable them to make their best contribution to its success. Human resource occupies a central system in an organization. The function, the functional ability and efficiency of people in a subsystem of an organization 
heavily rely on the policies, programs and practices of the human resource management. Human resource being the central subsystem of an organization interacts closely and continuously with all other subsystems of the organization. The other subsystems are financial subsystem, material subsystem, marketing subsystem and technology subsystem etc. So we can say that human resource system is an organization is not only unique subsystem but also a principal and central subsystem and it operates controls upon of all the other subsystems. Now let us know that how the role of human resource has changed from conventional to modern one with the passage of time. There is a paradigm shift in traditional ways to manage humans and to the modern approach. In the traditional time, focus was on the administration. Now, emerging human resource practices focus on strategies. Then, traditional human resource believed in reactive strategies, but now, proactive phase is the belief of an institution. Traditionally, human resource management believed in separation and isolation of the institution. But now, institution believes in the key mission of the education. Now, the focus is on the service, but traditionally, focus was on the outputs of an employee. Traditionally, human resource functions were done with vertical lines of authority, but now, work is done with horizontal responsibility. Traditionally, people were considered as expenses but now they are the investments. Now the question is how to develop human resource management strategy for educational institutions. An institution has to follow some steps in developing human resource management strategy. Step one is get the big picture. How? Understand the global strategy. Highlight the key driving forces of educational sector that is technology, curriculum, competition and the trends etc. Step 2. Develop a mission and vision statement. Here institution needs to be know what are the demands of people, what is going on in the global arena, not to put off by negative reaction to idealistic outlook, what do the employees of institution contribute to achieve the mission. Then step 3 is conduct a SWOT analysis of the institution. How? Consider in detail the institution's current areas of operation, the service levels and competencies of staff. Then focus on the internal strengths and weaknesses of the people inside the institution. Consider the current skill and capability issues. Vigorously research the good external practices implemented in other institutions highlight the opportunities and threats. Then consider skill shortage if any. The impact of new technology on the staffing levels, review the capability of institution. Step 4. Conduct a detailed human resource analysis. How? Concentrate on the organization's scopes. Scopes means culture, organization, people and human resource system. Consider of which level human resources are working in the institution now? Where do the institution expect them to be? What gaps exist between the reality of where they are now and where the institution want them to be? Step 5. Determine critical people issues. How? Go back to the institution strategy and examine if it against already done support and COPES analysis. Identify the critical people, namely those issues that institution must address. Prioritize the critical people issues. Then step 6, develop consequences and solutions. For each critical issue, highlight the options for managerial action. Generate, elaborate and create actions. Don't go for the obvious. This is an important step as frequently people jump for the known rather than the existing options and they try to do the things as they these have been done in the past. Think about the consequences of taking various courses of action. Translate the action plan into broad objectives. The areas of human resource system are 
employee training and development, management development, organization development, performance appraisal and employee reward, employee selection and recruitment, manpower planning, communication. The last step is the seventh step, implementation and evaluation of the action plans. The ultimate purpose of developing a human resource strategy should be to ensure that the objectives set are mutually supportive so that the reward and payment systems are integrated with employees training and career development plans. To sum up, we can say that human resource management is the qualitative improvement of human beings who are considered the most valuable assets of an institution. The sources, resources and end users of the educational system and services. It is a scientific process of continuously enabling the employees to improve and up to date their present and future expected roles so that the goals of the institution are achieved in cost effective manner as well as needs of the employees are also met to an adequate extent. There is need to manage human resources at national, organizational, professional and personal levels. Human resource management has changed from conventional to the modern one with the passage of time. A paradigm shift has been observed in human management with time. In the global competitive times, every institution need to develop its own human resource management strategy. Thank you.